How's it going? Welcome back to another CCH podcast. We have a really exciting and entertaining show today. We're going to be talking about all things from the All Seasons show. We have two of the newest members of the hiking show, the second crew. We also are joined by a special guest, Zach Hollingshad. He's a good friend from school. But anyway, as we get into this, I'd like first to have our guest introduce himself, and then we're going to talk about a little bit of what you do. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you, Mr. Comover. Right. I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got the new hairdo for the for the <laughs> podcast. No, but yeah, my name is uh, Zach Hollingshed. I uh, I was I went to IUP uh, as a graduate student with Aaron there and uh, and Josh also who is joining us here. Yeah, uh, I maps Josh. To be clear, but uh, yeah, that's uh kind of how I met Aaron and uh what else do you want to know well I mean I wanted to know what you do like what is something that you're actually doing with your life other than being on our podcast and dressing like you're gonna go cut down some wood uh, I'm a transportation planner for uh southwestern Pennsylvania Commission uh, what I do is uh, I work on the uh, transportation safety side of it and uh I'm new to it. I just got the job like two months ago. So, you know, if I, I can't really speak a whole lot on exactly what's going on, but, um, our goal is basically to make safer roads, um, identify areas of that need improved and count in, in uh, the counties in our region and, uh, you know, just work with the public. Basically, basically just, uh, trying to make the roads a better place and more enjoyable. All right. That's a very exciting thing. Uh, that probably puts you in a lot of work with PennDOT then, doesn't it? Or at least. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. The first job I was on, uh, we were out just uh, sinking traffic lights. Uh, and this was in North Huntington. And, uh, you know, within an hour, sure enough, somebody pulled up and there was like there was like 10 of us standing there but we were literally just looking at like these we were just watching these traffic lights right she comes up she's like man no wonder you guys don't work, get any work done As, they, she's like do you guys all work for pen dot i was <laughs> like no 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 <laughs> but yeah so uh one of those guys now i guess but they're not just standing around we're doing we're doing hard work <laughs> yeah yeah okay we'll we'll leave that one alone hard work Whew. but uh no seriously though on another leg here uh you used to <laughs> i can't keep it together you used to uh be in the gis program at iup right sure did yes. yeah can you explain to our viewers, this is one of the first ever episodes where we're talking about GIS and regional planning and the use of a lot of this, like the geography type of uh, gear with drones and GPS and different things like that. Yeah, so uh, first I'd like to say that it's a uh, happy GIS day to everyone that's uh, going to be listening to this in the future, or I guess... Uh, if they're not listening to the present, then it doesn't make much sense. But today, November 16th, is GIS Day. But yeah, I went to IUP uh, for my undergrad and uh, my graduate degree in GIS, geotechnology. And then uh, during my uh, graduate degree, I spent more time getting into the regional planning aspect of it and uh, transportation planning. And that's kind of how I ended up where I'm at now, which is a pretty good mix of GIS work with planning work can you break down what gis is used for like what do you what is the actual application of gis for those who don't know uh <laughs> i don't think you could say uh there's one application for gis but if you want to simplify it as much as possible it, it is uh keeping uh records or data i mean you know it used to be on pencil and paper but now it's all in databases and on the cloud and everything but you know just using using data about events uh features or really anything you want to map buildings whatever it is and then uh 
looking at it and being able to analyze it from a uh, in a different point of view and maybe see hoping hoping to find things that are like patterns and now more algorithm uh, algorithmic and uh, you know it solves a lot of issues that other other methods of you know science can't solve. I thought you were going to tell us what Dr. Hope told us. It's points, lines, and polygons. <laughs> well, those are, What's that? You know, that's, the, that's the intro class. I don't yeah. want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say uh, to the audience that maybe it's a good way of record keeping digitally with, let's let's say a lot of the information is on maps. So like we work... Josh Merchko and I currently work with IMAPS, and I know you are there, and they're keeping record of all the gas wells in Pennsylvania. And there's others, you know, there's places on there. Uh, when we were applying for a grant for the nonprofit PA Woods and Forests, we found uh, social, what is it? Is it environmental justice locations? And those were labeled on a GIS throughout the state. So we were able to identify like Johnstown, Indiana, Pittsburgh, different spots like that, Jeanette. As you know, and and it's all record keeping, and they're keeping that data um, with the government, but also for public use and just you know sure. different things like that. I mean, they're doing yeah, it with animals that's, too. That's one of the other uh, strengths of GIS is it can handle nominal type data and then all, also ordinal type data. So you know, the uh, you can have you know what what a ranking of 10 is in this town or whatever and that's that's uh different than having like a statistic of population and it, it can handle both types of data and uh that makes it a very powerful tool and also allows you to use both of those together to find okay um, stuff. i wouldn't i wouldn't go i wouldn't go as far as say it's a, just a digital thing because we've been using gis for what well you tell me what was the first uh first known gis and what was it used for if you can't answer it josh can answer it i want to hear josh's answer to this being <laughs> josh merchko being a gis oh, no you're your regional planning right no i'm focusing on gis <clears throat> you are focusing gis yeah mm -hmm. so what is it what was the first like breakthrough for it <laughs> you put him on the spot, man. Oh, no, I, I, I may be mis uh, diseasing it, but I, I think it was the cholera disease, and uh, I forget exactly what what town it was. But uh, this this man, he uh, was able to identify where people were getting sick from, and it was the local water by, you know, capturing where people are dying, and then he identified that they were drinking from this this well. Or this water source, and then that's how they, you know, solved that. They they figured out where the disease was coming from, and that that's like one of the earliest uh, use use cases for GIS. I really wish I could remember the exact details of it, but uh, I do believe it's cholera, and I do believe it was, you know, seventeen hundred sometime. Okay, yeah, I, I'm not trying to like uh, marginalize. GIS in any way. I just want to give it to people who might have absolutely no idea what it is or what we're sure. talking about. So I'm just trying to explain it in a way that maybe some folks might understand. But yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's very can, deep. They can't understand that. I mean, you know, you look at COVID, something we just all dealt with, and uh, it, it was a very similar application to like what the cholera thing did, you know. We were trying to find hotspots, locate hotspots uh, geographically. And um, you know we we're shutting towns based, shutting towns down based on it. You know that's that was that's a huge example of how GIS data was used recently. You know, on, to handle something very serious. I agree. Let me show something real quick. You could tell me whether this is or is not being used as like a a GIS program here. Uh, let me move this real quick. Move these over. So can you guys see on here? Yeah, I think you can. <clears throat> so this is the amphibian and reptile survey of Pennsylvania that's been going on. It's something that I've participated in. 
I could log in, but then I'd give people access to my records and I don't necessarily want people seeing everything. But would you say that this would be a form of GIS? Uh, yeah, for sure. You have a, I mean, it, it definitely is. You know, GIS is so broad. It's just like, you know, <laughs> Google Maps is GIS, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, wanted to give a tangible thing here and also can show off being the first to actually find it. <laughs> just a little plug right there for people to see that I really was the first to. Where, uh, where's your uh, coordinates at? Uh, those are hidden, so that way people don't go out there and catch them and steal them because yeah. that can be a real thing. I don't want, I don't want to see people putting gray tree frogs in a five-gallon bucket and then putting them on eBay, which they will do. So, so that's how all. how are you, how have you been able to uh, display that data without uh, you know potentially compromising uh, these animals you're trying to protect or these species you're trying to protect? They have it behind a private wall for the regional coordinators to see only that data along with the person that shares it. So I have access to all of it. It exports as a CSV file. I could does put there, that does in. Does everyone have access to that map that you just showed? I think it was a county map. Yeah, they have access to the map and not to the points, like not to the coordinates. Sure. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I guess the polygon of the county shape is what they have outlined if the animal existed or didn't exist there. And then the color was the intensity level. Um, and I'm only able to see what I have put on there in terms of coordinates and like exact data. And that's some stuff. I mean, we're, we won't go too deep with that tonight because I don't want right, to waste right. all our time, but that's something similar that the nonprofit wants to do. Uh, but moving forward, uh, I wanted to shift some gears here and open this up to what we're doing with our hiking show. So we, we just talked about geospatial um, technology with GIS, but you know, there's a lot more to the geospatial science realm with GPS and UA, UAS, UAV, and sure. I was just wondering, I'll open it up to you first and then we'll go to Josh Babel here, but what are your thoughts on us incorporating UAS and GPS and different things into our show for hiking? I mean, that's not usually a common thing. I mean, people will fly drones, but, you know, to have more of a geographic uh, label on it, you know, we have elevation points, we have the actual, like, uh, the location of where we are and we're doing a lot of different stuff. We're looking at it through various perspectives as well, like on the ground versus up in the drone. I mean, what are your thoughts on having a hiking show that's trying to do all that? Well, what, I guess, what's the goal? Of, what, what is the goal of the data you're trying to record? We're trying to take people out on really cool adventures through Pennsylvania. So that way uh, they get a chance to be there and experience it with us. And we get a chance to tell it through a story using a, more of a minimalist perspective. Oh, what's up? <laughs> Sorry, I was getting camera bombed here. That's Go all right. Ahead. I was but just saying, a minimal minimalist perspective. So you want you want high accuracy GPS data? Uh, not necessarily for the show, but we have that if we want it. Like we could actually get the coordinates and we could export that for people. But just you know, showcasing the aerial imagery and and maybe even talking about the landscape of you know, if things had been timber harvested or if, if there's like some type of mining going on versus sure. maybe historically what's happened. So we're look, we're opening it up to more of, a, I guess, a, a broader geography perspective, but, you know, just incorporating some of this, this new tech and these gadgets. I mean, what is, what is that? Uh, how do, how do you feel personally about a hiking show incorporating that into it? I mean, I think it opens the doors to a lot of different things you could do. Uh, you could have cultural, like cultural features. You could have land features. You could have danger features. You know, there's a lot of different things you could do that uh, I think would help, would aid any hiker or any uh, one trying to get started in it, and uh, also might help identify an area that makes someone want to go see and maybe get them off off the couch and out out and hiking. Yeah, I think a, a good show, good example of, it's not necessarily our direction, but it's very, it's a very interesting show is on the Weather Channel. Uh, it is called Uncharted Adventure with Mike Corey. He's a biologist, but 
he is a it's a travel show but it's incorporating a lot of this stuff that we're doing as well um a little bigger of a budget but i mean there are gopros and drones and mics like we have so i mean it's yeah. just you know we're on par with that but okay i wanted uh wanted to open it up here now and ask our friend josh babel who is the i guess the main host of the second crew for the hiking show uh, and this was actually his concept, his idea at first saying, hey, Aaron, like, you know, you have a platform here. I think we can incorporate hiking and bring in those people onto the to the YouTube channel to check out your content. And it might in interest them to look at frogs. But uh, I mean, this was an idea that Josh had. And, you know, we've gotten a season four with it already. And we started out, you know, trying to camp and had minimal gear, not necessarily the best. And I think we've worked our way up to having a very a very uh elaborate show now for season four season three was pretty good i mean what's your perspective on how far we've come and just the improvements and, and the concepts that we're doing now i mean what what do you think about that for future episodes well it's a pretty good question um to be honest with you i think the the biggest difference with season four um compared to season one two and three specifically would be I think we're encapsulating the scope of what we're actually trying to achieve better. Um, like we've grown in the idea of, well, the original idea and the original idea, if you don't know, was to at some point cover every single county. And I forget the number, I think it's 63 in Pennsylvania or something like that. I'm sure someone will correct me, cover every single county, find something significant. It could be a species. It could be um, like when we were, up north trying to go to the to the grand canyon not the grand canyon but the the pennsylvania grand canyon um geographically speaking that's a significant location in, in pennsylvania unfortunately we weren't able to film there because of construction um but i think season four has really amped up our locations um i think we're hitting more spots i think we're kind of spreading out instead of just doing the same things and kind of checking on the same locations which is nice for certain content but this is like hey do you want to experience the appalachian mountains do you want to experience pennsylvania because it's huge i mean you go all the way up to erie it's like a completely different area than going all the way down to philly you know i know that's a, a city but even like the outskirts like it, it's completely different but you're in the same state so i really feel like there's a lot to cover especially in between um those two locations in the middle um and in, in Western Pennsylvania, you have the, the Rust Belt and there's historical, you talked about mining and other historic operations that might impact a geographical location. We can film that, we can talk about it and, and cover it and then also look at different animals that may have impacted and, and how they're doing. Um, so I, yeah, that, I think the biggest thing is the scope is getting more fixed on what we're trying to achieve. Also, the, the technology is getting a lot better. Um, I know you've invested a lot of money in your your equipment but i think you've invested a lot of time in your ability to edit the videos you're pretty much doing all of the editing if not literally all of it i don't know if maria is helping you um it, it's 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 really coming along you know i i really enjoy it <laughs> but i would like to be able to to help at some level with the editing even if it's just like basic stuff you know i i don't know if it's going to be this year or next year um where it's you know worthy of being put on the the youtube platform but i think if we can get more people involved in either filming going to locations editing writing scripts if we do anything like that we haven't but if we do i think it'll kind of like explode our options because it's not just all on you um i know you got a lot on you so Maybe we can help at some point. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think that's a good way to describe it. Josh Marichka, you're a newcomer to this. I mean, you've been in two hikes now. I mean, what's your perspective on the way that the show has gone from your perspective? And and if you want to even speak to having a, what is it, a geologist, like a geological background with rocks and different right. things like that, how you can even incorporate that into the show? Right, like I, I enjoyed learning about all the different plants and insects, like what you go over in your videos. And I think it's that you got your new drone, so seeing your new high quality videos, it's a nice way to incorporate things into your videos. And 
I feel like it's it's pretty interesting the way you have it set up, how you can go about and just walk out in the field and, and you, like your knowledge, your background in biology and everything, you can talk about all the plants and animals with pretty good, like you know what you're talking about, you because that's your what your degrees in. And yeah, I just think it's a pretty cool because you can expand it. You, you can I can I could start talking about the geology of everything and we can go into that. So yeah. Yeah. I I agree with that. <laughs>